Welcome back everybody to another episode of Church War Confessions and on this episode we talk about prayer. I truly remember the days when I would we'd be at church and I'd be praying and I'd just fall asleep or I'd just be super bored and I'd just daydream or anything like that. Let's just say that I've had a long life of not taking my prayer life seriously. More recently things have changed. Thank God. I could honestly say that now that I take my prayer life seriously, I have a lot more peace in my heart and in my mind. So I want to share with you guys this episode, how to have a healthy prayer life and what it takes to have a healthy prayer life. If you love this episode, please share it with somebody who needs it. And please click subscribe below if you haven't already. You can like it and you can press a little notification bell to know when we have new videos. That, that'd be cool. I've never said that one before. But yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys love it. Peace. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Lined up this week, but I'm here to tell you that, yo, you can do it. It's a very present help helping us. He will direct your path. Hello. Um, but yeah, let's get into this message, ladies and gentlemen. I would say the past week, I've been very peaceful. I've been at peace. I truly have been. I, I really have been. Like, I, I would really clap for myself right now. Um, the reason why I've been at peace is because my prayer life has been so healthy. As of recent, I have felt conviction of God to really invest in my prayer life. And I must say, it's days where I wake up and even before I'm reading the Bible, before like I hear any type of encouragement from God, God I'm just praying. I just pray and like everything like I don't know I just feel so much better. Um and it's funny because you know at the top of the year I remember this. I remember this like being said to me at the top of the year. Um it was in Sunday school and the pastor said that this year is going to be a year of prayer. I believe it was a pastor at my Sunday at Sunday school. It's going to be a year of prayer. At that time, you know, of course like I was like amen, but like I will say that my prayer life I pray every day. Um, but I will say that, you know, recently it's I've taken it much, much more seriously time and time again. You see that, you know, in the Bible, you see God say, and I heard the cry of my children and I heard the cry of my children. You look at verse um, Romans chapter eight, verse 15 says, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's what the word of God says, that we don't have to have the spirit of fear. We don't have to be bond, bound with the spirit of fear anymore because we can cry out to our father. What is crying out to your father? That is prayer, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to fear because you can pray. That's interesting. You don't have to fear because you can communicate with the father. My business is to do what God asked me to do, be obedient, you know what I'm saying, make sure like, you know, my heart is in the right place. Um, I've repented all different stuff. And it's like, that's what I'm in control of. Um, and I pray to God and God is going to be the one that does what he does, you know, once I've done what he's told me to do. And when you realize that you don't have to earn everything, but God delivers it, you realize, OK, what I want to get is going to come from God. And it takes a little less pressure off of you. Um, and I would say this, like, you know, my prayer life, I think, has changed because I've realized the difference between praying with trust and praying with fear. And I, and I really want everybody to get this. There's a difference between praying with trust and then praying with fear. I feel like a lot of us, you know, we pray, we say we have faith and we send off a prayer to God. Right. But like as we're sending the prayer off, we're still kind of holding on to a little bit. I think that's because of fear. You know, like we can pray, but we're st it's still on our mind. We're still worried about it. We're still anxious about it and all that different stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, and like the, the, the thing is, the verse that I just read just said, you know, we're not um, we don't have to to be in the spirit of bondage again to fear because we can cry out to God. But a lot of us, we cry out to God and we still hold fear with us. It's more like we're praying, um, but we're still worrying about everything. Whereas now I feel like in my prayer life, I'm developing where I, I pray to God and it's just like, Ugh, that's his business now. You know, like I'm going to do what he's been telling me to do. I'm going to follow instructions and all that different stuff. But since I'm not earning it and he's delivering it, it's his business. It's his business. 
like when you pray with trust, you're now more inclined to let things go. When you actually pray it up to God, you're not going to hold on to it at the same time. You're not going to pick it back up from the altar after you've already laid it down at the altar. You're saying, God, here is your homework. Here's what you do because I can't do it. And I would tell you, you know, a lot of us are scared to ask God for things, but it's like God wants us to have a reliance on him. Look up the definition of trust. The word reliance is somewhere in there. A reliance on him. He wants that. He wants you to rely on him. Um, but I will say, you know, in order to pray, pray with trust, you have to, you know, trust God. And I will say that, you know, it's hard to trust God if you're not knowledgeable of who God is. You know, that's why, like, you know, faith come from hearing hearing of the word of god you have to familiarize with the character familiarize yourself with the character of god you have to familiarize yourself with who he is and his will you understand what i'm saying because how, how can you trust somebody that you don't know when you know more about god you are able to trust in him more and when you're able to trust in him more you're able to pray and let things go and and have a reliance on him I think knowing who God is is so important. How can you how can you rely on somebody that you don't know? How could you know that God loves you if you don't know even know who God is? I feel like when people actually understand who God is, when they actually have the proper perception of God in their in their life, those that prayer life becomes very easy, ladies and gentlemen. That life becomes very easy. But let's continue. Um you have to, you, you know, pray. I, I feel like prayer doesn't really work the way it needs to work if you don't have trust in God. Um, I'm going to read from verse um, first John chapter five, verse 14 to 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, him being God. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever, we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. I, I'm going to read that again. And this is the confidence that we have in him, in God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. OK. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever, we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Doesn't it sound so simple? What this verse just told us is that we ask God, we pray to God, we ask God of things that are according to his will. If we ask God of things that are according to his will, he will hear us. Yeah. And since we know that we he now hears us, we know that we have the positions that we just desired of him. We ask it's according to God's will. He hears us. It's ours. That's the word of God. And if you truly trust the word of God, this right here lifts so much weight off of your shoulders. It lifts so much weight off of your shoulders. If it's according to his will. And you may ask, OK, well, you know, you're saying it simple, Emmanuel, but like, how do I know what God's will is? How do any of us always know what God's will is? Well, you're going to find out if you're praying for the wrong things that never come sometimes. It could be. Um. But when you're walking in his path, I believe that God truly does know how to make things known to you um, that he wants to make known to you. I feel like when you're in when you're in the word, when when you're taking your faith seriously, when you're taking your walk seriously, when you take the time to listen to God every day. When you get in your word every day, God speaks. That's one. But what I wanted to say is the reason why I feel like there's so much peace in this point is because we really can stop. This gives us license to stop worrying after we pray, because we know that if we're if we're asking things according to God's will, then he's going to give it to us. Right. That's what the scripture just says right here. But then you think about like, man, like, you know, we always get upset when, oh, like it looks like God's not moving or it looks like this is not happening or that's not happening. But then I'm going to look at Romans chapter eight, verse 28, because we got the scriptures today, ladies and gentlemen. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called, who are the called according to his purpose. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. So what it sounds like after this verse saying that all things work together for our good to those that love God and them that are the called according to his purpose. It sounds like I pray according to his will 
and I get it because it's his will. Or if I don't pray according to his will, I don't get it because it's not his will. But don't you understand that all things work together for your good? So let's say that you miss an opportunity or let's say that you ask a miss or let's say that you do get what you want, whatever it might be. What you can rest on is that all things will work together for your good. All things will work together for your good. If God does answer your prayer, amen, amen, glory to God. I'm sharing my testimony. And if God doesn't answer your prayer, a lot of us, we don't know what to do at that point. Maybe God's not real. Or man, you know, God, God forsook me. God let me down on that point. God let me down. God wasn't there for me. But the Bible says that all things work together for your good. So could it be that the reason why you don't have what God is, is what you've asked God for is because it's not according to his will. And then when you realize that his will for you is for all things work together for your good, man, come on, man. Because we can look at Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul had a situation where he was asking God for something and you think that it was according to God's will. Why would God want me to walk around with the thorn in my flesh being so uncomfortable in life? And you can read this yourself. It's in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Why would God want me to walk around with the thorn in my flesh? And I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying to God. God, can you remove this thorn from my flesh? And God said, nah. <laughs> God said, nah. You might be thinking to yourself like, yo, God, I'm asking you to do this for me. God, I'm asking you to heal me. God, I'm asking you to do all these different things. Is this not according to your will? I thought you loved me. Why aren't you doing these things for me, God? And God said, nah. What did God say, Apostle Paul? He said, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. In your weakness, I display my strength. Hmm. That my grace is sufficient for you. That kind of, I feel like that sounds like the same thing, like all things work together for our good. And if you read that passage, Paul started rejoicing at that point. God says that my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> that doesn't mean that I'm going to give you everything that you pray for. Some of the things that you pray for are not the things that I want for you. You submitted your life to Jesus Christ, didn't you? So you said he can do what he wants to do with your life, didn't you? Some of the things you're asking for is not what I want to give you, sweetheart. And that's that. And that's that. But my grace is sufficient for you. So then that's where we can have the peace of mind, knowing that I'm going to ask God. And if I'm asking according to his will, I'm going to get it. Thank God. And if I ask, if I'm not asking according to his will and I don't get it, then maybe, you know, I fix myself, right? And I ask again, and then I will get it. Or maybe I'm asking, and I don't have to fix anything. God just doesn't want it for me. And it's like, hey, all things work together for my good. You understand how there's, where do you lose at? I'm, am I missing it? Somebody tell me, where, where am I losing at? There's some accountability in all of this that I want to I wanna reel it back real quick just because I don't want you to think that like, oh, that's it. It's not it because that will part is very interesting. And there are some times where we are praying for things, um, but we're not being heard. But God wants to give us those things. That time also exists. Um, when you look at places in the Bible, Matthew chapter six, verse, first, verse 15 talks about how we when we're praying for forgiveness, we need to make sure that we forgive the people in our lives. People who have done us wrong if you want to be forgiven by the father. So God may not hear you at that time. Or may not want to hear you at that time or may not act at that time if you have not forgiven other people in your life. Um, in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18 says that if I have iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. So make sure you're asking for forgiveness before you're asking for your for your Lambo <laughs> in Jesus name. Right. Look at, you know, God resists the proud and he uplifts the humble. You can see that you can see that in uh, James chapter four, verse six. Being prideful, that'll do it'll do that to you. Make sure you fix that. Asking a miss. You know, you asking for the Lambo to to cruise down uh Pacific Highway. What is that gonna do for the kingdom? Maybe if you ask for the van, 
you know what I'm saying, to help people give give people rides to church, you know, maybe you'll get that. Or maybe you're asking for the Lambo so you can, I don't know, I don't know why you need a Lambo, but you ask, you have not because you ask and miss. You can see that in um, James chapter 4, verse 3. Um, And also, if you're just literally asking something that's opposite to what God wants for you, but you, you understand that in all these lists, you realize that, hey, maybe God's not answering my prayer and he wants to give me something because something's going on with me and I need to fix that and take accountability for that. And you just you 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 heard me or you saw me read these things off to you. Make sure that you're not being prideful. Make sure that you've forgiven other people in your lives. Make sure that you are not hiding iniquity in your heart. Make sure that you are not asking for the wrong reasons.